it's a digital age. That's how we communicate today. This is Local SEO Tactics, where each week we bring you tips and tricks to help you get found online. And this week we're going to do something a little bit different. Uh, we're going to put Bob under the hot lights here. Bob's been doing local service business for over 20 years here. And uh, we're just going to kind of dissect his brain, uh, talk about local SEO, local marketing, and, and things that are really important from a business owner perspective. So I think you guys really enjoy this. Uh, check it out. Hey everyone, Jesse Dolan here. I want to talk to you real quick about SiteGround, which is our WordPress site hosting uh, host of choice. Uh, two we use for pretty much all of our websites. If anybody ever asks us, who should I switch to? I'm using GoDaddy or I'm using HostGator or anything else. Uh, where should I host my website? Uh, particularly if you're using WordPress, we always recommend SiteGround. We've tried pretty much all the big players out there. Um, a lot of them are great. I mean, there's not a huge separation in everybody. So if you don't want to switch, don't don't freak out. You don't have to go do it right now. But if you're looking to make a switch, um, we can't recommend these guys enough. Yep. If you go to siteground.com slash go slash local SEO tactics, uh, that's going to bring you right to their WordPress hosting page. They have packages that start at $3.95 per month. And I think that's for a trial period. And that's like eleven ninety five a month. So super cheap. It's optimized for WordPress. And the thing that we've really liked about them the most is their customer support. Yep. Um, Instant chat. They're all of the people that get on there for tech support are just complete rock stars. Um, they're super, super responsive, and we've never been dissatisfied. I usually don't, you know, try to gush too much about tech support, right? It's kind of a, a, a dorky thing, but um, we've had problems. We we run into challenges, and these guys are always, always on point. So can't recommend them enough. Check them out. SiteGround.com slash go slash local SEO tactics. Hey everyone, welcome back to Local SEO Tactics. Jesse Dolan here with Bob Brennan. And this week we're going to kind of change it up a little bit. I'm actually going to interview Bob. Um, I don't know if anybody's paid attention to some previous episodes. Uh, Bob still has brick and mortar businesses that we operate here in Minneapolis, Twin Cities area. And we're going to kind of dissect some of that here today, uh, ask Bob some questions and talk about, you know, local SEO tactics, quite frankly, um, and frame that up against the bigger marketing backdrop of everything you can do for a business. And uh, just share with you guys some of this insight. Uh, we want you to know we're not just some local SEO dudes or internet marketing dudes up here kind of spouting out knowledge, regurgitating it. Uh, we put this into practice, you know, every single day. So, um, we'll just kind of kick this off, rolling back, uh, the clock. How long have you been talking stuff? <laughs> <laughs> I've been in sales, you know, pretty much one form or the other all my life. My dad had a, a small business okay. and, uh, that's kind of where I picked up on a little bit of customer service. Sure. And then, uh, uh, throughout my life, we, you know, I've held different jobs and, you know, mowed lawns as a kid, uh, you know, just the usual stuff to, right. to make a buck for, for a middle class kid or what have you. So, uh, but I didn't get into owning my own business exclusively. I had a small landscape uh, construction business back in the the late eighties, sure. and didn't get into this business until, gosh, it was probably ninety one, ninety two. Uh, um, some a friend of mine approached me and said, "Hey, what are you doing in the winter?" And I was going to school, and they uh, they said, "Hey, I got this great gig on the side. You can go sell re-inked printer ribbons." So that's, that's old school. That is old school. <laughs> so yeah, you would you would go to businesses, collect their spent ribbons. We'd send them off to somebody. They would reverse spool them, add ink, and uh, it was a huge savings. And unfortunately, the defect rate was probably right off the hook so uh over time that kind of dried up and then it went into toner cartridges sure uh and uh then that that all evolved from there right. so so back you know like i said early early mid 90s uh google wasn't exactly a big thing back then <laughs> like like it is now right, right so right um just a minute or two real quick like what was the marketing landscape at that point in time yeah so i mean the the big thing to do Email was a form of communication much like, let's say, Facebook Messenger is today or texting even is to some degree, the, the way I looked at it. Sure. You, you only emailed one if you had an email, right? And then um, from there, it wasn't really, uh, it was kind of the, the cutting edge. It wasn't really, so we're talking 95. Okay. You know, it wasn't uh, a, a real avant-garde type type thing. It was, it, it was strictly for communication. So if you were to do any marketing, it was really knocking on doors 
or it was cold calling, you know, over the phone and then direct mail or letters or sales letters sure. and you would follow up on those, but you did it consistently. So my goal, you know, when starting out my business was probably getting 50 to 80 letters out a day and trying to follow up on those three days later or sure. two days later and then uh, following up on that. And so then you had CRM database like ACT and some other stuff to, to really kind of grow your business. And that was probably the most effective way to do it. It was a grind. It wasn't fun, uh, but it worked. Yeah, to get in front of people, get your message across. Yeah. And, yeah. Instead of knocking on doors and sending out letters and following up on the phone. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And that was before snail mail was coined snail mail because it was just straight up mail right. at that point because like right. email was just kind of taken off. Um, and I've been working with Bob since since these 90s here, so I kind of know some of these answers, but sure. I'll, uh, I'll- It's kind of loaded. Right. I'll seed this a little bit too. Uh, faxing. Oh, yeah. Direct, direct fax. Yeah. Campaigns. Remember those days? Yeah. <clears throat> Run on that sucker all night long. Um, and so my kind of point for asking some of those questions is that's a lot of labor intensive stuff there for, for marketing. Yeah. Um, and cost too. And cost. And it's really, you know, 20 years ago in, in some ways, not a long time ago. Um, in some ways, I mean, generations ago, quite literally uh, with technology here. Um, so I want to kind of step forward a little bit. Um, obviously, at some point in time, Technology started advancing. Emails became, you know, more mainstream, if you will. Um, how did the marketing kind of evolve from there? It's still big telemarketing bank, direct mail. Yeah, we don't, at this time, we don't do any telemarketing. I should say what telemarketing we're doing is very sniper. Yeah. I mean, I, I do most of the calls and some of the staff here call, but they make maybe 10, 20 calls a day. But it's much more an effective call to... Sure. Uh, an email response that they've given us or an inquiry they've given us. Yeah. So now you have what we call more pull marketing where before we're pushing. Right. So anybody want to buy flowers? Hey, you want to buy flowers? You want to buy flowers? Well, this is, you know, this is different. This yeah. is, you know, somebody's going to the internet and they're, they're needing a florist because they've gotten a fight with their wife or, or what have you. So yeah, that's, that's really how it's evolved. It's, it's pull marketing. So as you know, a sales manager and owner and salesperson, um, kind of wearing all those hats on any, any given year, um, can you kind of contrast that, that pull marketing you know, versus the push marketing as far as, uh, as a business owner, kind of speaking to our audience out there? Yeah. Um, cause a lot of people still, we, we talk to a lot of people there. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if internet stuff, I'm kind of out there. We're, yeah. getting, we're getting plenty of business, you know? Yeah. No. And, and I think, you know, as a business owner, I've, I've got a, a, an ample size ego. And so if somebody says, Hey, are you making enough money or whatever? You know, I'm ready for the other foot to drop. And I'm going to say, yeah, you know, I'm making enough money. That's all word of mouth. Everybody loves me right. or whatever. And I think that's just a defense mechanism. Hey, yeah. We're a word of mouth business. Okay, great. You know, but really that's not going to cut it. Right. You know, because the next recession that comes along, you know, you, your customers probably all love you, but if they're not in business or they, you know, they can't order as much, then what are you going to do? Right. And I, you know, as a business owner for 20 some years, it's, you've always got to have a plan B just like in life. I mean, you just, you, you don't put all your investments in one company. Sure. Apple's a great company, but you know, somebody else comes along with something different, you're, you're stuck. Right. So yeah, I mean that's that's pretty much how it's changed. It's it's one of those things where, um, for the most part, you, you've got to get out, you've got to promote, you've got to begin to learn and understand Facebook, you've got to understand Google, you've got to. It's a digital age. That's how we communicate today. Sure. So, so if we go back, kind of harkening back to those old days, um, I'm making some guesses, but what was important? Um, like I said, eighty letters a day going out, right? Yeah. Uh, booking X appointments a day. Um, do you have any other like quick metrics you can kind of re recall that were important on the dashboard back then? Yeah. I mean, you would, you would do AB testing with different, different letters, okay. you know, but um, you know, that would take weeks sometimes to figure out in thousands of dollars. Right. Right. Cause postage is postage. It's, right. you know, it's, it's expensive. I remember, gosh, we were spending $3,000 a month on postage. Right. Just, just different direct mail. And that's before you get into 
anything else. You know, envelopes. And this is or, local business again too. It's not a national campaign. No, 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 <laughs> no, no. This <laughs> couple is, suburbs right. surrounding. So. You know, three thousand dollars a month, and, and my poor wife's like, yeah, we don't. You know, we can barely afford groceries. Right. <laughs> like, well, but we got we, postage to pay for. We got to do what we got to do. You know, right. type of a thing. So, yeah, I mean, that's that's some of those dynamics. Another dynamic there is, you know, you're trying to do all the right things. It costs money to experiment. Yeah. And just to do A B testing and it's it's a form of gambling essentially. Right. So So if you could fast forward kind of some of that, um, you know, some of the important metrics, you know, some of the how do you do the testing, things like that. Um, nowadays it's all digital, right? Yeah. I mean, we're kind of skipping over a little bit where email really came into play. Don't have to do as much direct mail. You can try to email people. Um it's kinda, you know, in vogue for a long time. Things are there's all kinds of messaging nowadays. Yep. Um but today you know, running a sales team, running a business, uh, what's important? Obviously you're not sending out tons and tons of newsletters, tons of, uh, I'm sorry, uh, not sending out ton of, tons of mail pieces, right. Um, making hundreds of phone calls, you know, seeing 85 appointments happen, whatever. What, what are some important metrics today as a business owner? Well, there's, there's all kinds of, uh, important metrics and, but there's some basics that I think every business owner has to understand. And that's, that's just, you know, we, we're into measuring everything. Sure. And we literally measure our phone calls, listen to our phone calls. We, we, it becomes more and more predictable and we can take that, those measurements. And if we want to go into a different market, we can test that market with, with a website that we may or may not be in that market, but you know, if you're getting X amount of calls a month that will support a business location there, you know? So there's, there's, there's the basic, uh, measurements, you know, that everybody could probably understand and get into, but it's becoming even more subtle now as we get into psychographics, which I think we'll talk about, yeah. you know, in the future where, you know, you, you start to target people that make 200 and between 230 and 240,000 or $50,000. And they have blue eyes, two kids and four dogs, right. you know, whatever the case is. And then your approach to there is, is much more subtle in terms of, you know, what you're putting out there on the internet and then how they're getting into your funnel. Right. And it's, it's exciting. I mean, it's, it's a slow process, but then once you have the process down, uh, you're spending what, what do you think? One tenth the money, if you will. Jeez. Yeah. If that even, I mean, yeah. if you're talking like the overall marketing spend, yep. uh, and frame it up on outbound marketing right. or, or, or push marketing, uh, where we're contacting people cold. Yeah. It's, it's way less than it would be compared to telemarketing, right. cold calling, beating the street, things like that. Um, and I think you're hitting on the nail on the head as far as why is you can really segment down. Um, I know back in the day when we were doing some of these marketing campaigns, it's all about the list you would buy, right? Like, is it, uh, you know, the certain technology group or these, this certain industry group and SIC codes and stuff and trying to kind of filter that down, but you're still blanketing, you know, with a very paint with a very big brush here for who you're targeting. Right using things like Facebook, um, like you said, getting into that demographic and psychographic information, you might only be marketing to 300 people, but you know they're all potential customers. There's no guesswork in it. You're, yeah. You know, if, if any of them responds, it's going to be a good thing. So. Well, I think we've all gotten an ad that pops up in our in our Facebook feed or, or somehow pops up in some website we're visiting. And I'm not talking about the follow me ads that, mm-hmm. that okay, you visited that site and now you're getting those ads. We're talking... How did they know I was thinking about an outdoor kitchen? <laughs> right. You know, before I did. Right. And it's it's big data. I mean, they know this stuff. Sometimes they know what you're going to do next before you do it, right. so to speak. Right. Um, and so, you know, there's there's the good and the bad of that. You know, there's there's um, you know there's there's ways that things people get exploited to some degree, yep. and lower classes could potentially get exploited. I mean, sure. I'm not going to go down that road, but. But yeah, it's all about big data. They know everything, or you can buy just about everything to to work on that that element, that psychographic piece. Right. You know what I mean? Right. So yeah, that's I mean that's how it's changed. It, and it you know if you would have told me all this twenty years ago, I'd be you know whatever you're nuts yeah. type of a thing. But today, you know, as a small business person, it's nothing for us to do major amounts of work with China and get stuff imported. Right. And therefore. If we've got all this inventory coming in, we better have it sold before it hits the dock. 
you know. And well, speaking of inventory and kind of that, that front loading, I want to go back to what you said just a minute ago about, um, let's say you want to open a new location, right? You go go back, go back 20 years ago, or even five years ago. Um, let's say you wanted to open a new store, a new branch or whatever your business is. Pick a good spot, put up some signage, get some kind of advertising going locally right. first, uh, move in grand opening and you cross know, your fingers. Say, say, look, it's going to take us three to six months to, to break even, you right. know, we're going to kind of ramp up whatever. Um, and you're kind of alluding to, you know, t- you can test some of that now with technology. It really turns it on its ear. What you can do as a business owner to mitigate some of that risk and, and try stuff out. So. Yeah. Yeah. No. And, it, and it's, it's interesting because main street, you know, main street is changing. It's, it's not just, you know, main street businesses are affected by, they used to be affected by Walmart, right? Coming in and, and Walmart would gobble up a small town and gobble up the business. Right. Well, now Walmart's being affected by Amazon, right? Just like all the other businesses. So as business owners, we have to shift and we have to market effectively and we have to shift towards, I call it a service-based business with a little bit of add-on stuff that, that we can pull from China or whatever to sell or whatever right. the case is. So again, not to go in eight different directions, but the landscape of business is changing quite a bit. Well, I know getting some just specific examples, we've done this for our own businesses and we tell customers this all the time. Uh, let's say you are going to open up that new store. Um, if you can receive mail there, you know, maybe, maybe you're two months or three months away from actually opening your doors for business. Yeah. You can get mail there, set up your GMB, you know, like you can do so much stuff online, you know, virtually, right. To, to, Test it out to see even if, it, if it'll fly or not. Right. Uh, but then even just start that marketing. You don't have to wait till you throw that banner up saying, grand opening, we're here. Uh, you can start all, all that ahead of time. And, and we've coached plenty of people. Like somebody calls, like, I'm sorry, the store's not open yet. You know, here, here's the date or maybe we can help you at the other location, you know, and things like that. But um, that's kind of amazing to frame up compared to what it was a few years ago on how to open a store, you know, how to test market something. There's so much you can do online for virtually no cost. You know, yeah. compared, you yep. don't have to bring in all this inventory, do all this build out, do all these things to see if anybody even cares. You can try it first. Yeah. And for us, it's kind of somewhat reversed for us. Our our next step is really to, to and Jamie's working on this within our business, but but really focus on that that online business now. Yeah. So we've, we've got, you've got a base of customers that are off the street. How can you build on that with them in terms of, creating a decent online presence so they don't have to go to your store obviously to order they can just order yep. that way and then somehow tie that into amazon or tie it through some other marketing efforts and you can build off of that so i mean there's all kinds of approaches you can you can skip the brick and mortar which in, the, in a lot of ways makes sense sure or if you already have an established brick and mortar how do you build on that and create a good online presence for your brick and mortar clients you know in 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 others obviously to, to build off of that. So it's, I think the key is you're putting out content, you're serving your customers anyways, you might as well, you know, whip open a store. So if they around Christmas time want to order your product for some of their friends, they're, they're ready to go. Yeah, if somebody's sitting at home, that's a great point. They're going to order something. They're doing some shopping. It's late at night, whatever. They're not going to come to your store. Everybody's busy nowadays, which right. is why technology a exists at the pace it does. And then B why we are, it's kind of a chicken or the egg thing there, you know, but, yep. um, I'm ordering this laptop tonight, right? Or I'm ordering these socks tonight or like whatever it is somebody's selling locally. Uh, I'm not going to wait tomorrow to go into your store, right? But I know your brand, you know? So if you have, if you made that easy to me, easy for me to get online versus coming to your store, that's a great point. You could lose out on that loyal customer just because you don't have that ability. And if you're not making it so you can either do e-commerce or at least take orders, like have online forums and communication forums, um, your competitors are. You know, and you're going to lose some of that um, every year. Your example of Walmart being the big fish, but now Amazon being the big fish that's eating up some Walmart right. space um, kind of rings true even down to that local service level because businesses are getting innovative. Um, even a little boutique shop, you know, can have some of the same features that Amazon.com has for their own little local store, which you would think about before. There's no way you got to go in there and just, you know, meet the person and talk to them and, and get your service done, right? Not anymore. You can buy that all online prepay gift card to somebody or something or just so many things you can do virtually Um, if you're not taking advantage of that as a business owner or a marketing manager or whatever um, there's definitely a slice of business there yeah it's it's undeniable so yeah and if i was targeting walmart i'd figure out a way to merge and i would target amazon and say what 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 can we bring that's disruptive to the market that amazon doesn't have right and that's either same day delivery or 
some crazy unconditional guarantee or whatever it is because you're you're talking about an incredible company right. that is putting physical what a couple of years ago they only had so many warehouse distribution centers and now <laughs> they have they're all over they all they're all over and they're competing with all these major retailers you better figure out a way for your very own existence and survival to either mix services in with your retail or or do something incredibly disruptive or you're you're going to be gone just like Sears is just about gone. Yeah. And I think the tie that binds all that is people are looking for ease of use and technology related solutions, right? Yeah. Whether it's uh, like Chipotle, I want to order, you know, and then come in and pick it up. Yep. I mean, just as a simple example um, of how to tie in technology and online type stuff to your physical store. Um, you know, Jimmy John's delivers it to you. I mean, just like how can you be a little bit different than your competitors? And like you said, Amazon, um, I'm sorry, Walmart and Target are playing catch up to Amazon in a lot of spaces. Um, because Amazon is leading that and they're not leading that cause they're necessarily the best. Right. Um, but they are, they were there first. So they're le- literally leading. Right. So whatever your, you know, our listeners, whatever your business is, what is your competitors not doing or what are they doing a really bad job of that? You can jump out there and kind of be leading in. It doesn't have to be a perfect solution. You just find a need and fill it for what your customers are doing using technology somehow. Um, because it really levels a playing field, no matter how big you are. Um, if you can get out there and do a good job, it's going to resonate with your customers, you know? So, um, I want to circle back. Um, so a lot of that was kind of focused around some outbound stuff. Yeah. Um, you had said on the, the inbound, the pull, I'm sorry. Yeah. The pull side, people contacting you. I think that was a pretty big paradigm shift, um, in the company from the marketing aspect of so much time and energy spent on contacting people, you know, interrupting people. Hey, next time you need X, Y, Z widget, remember us, you know, put this postcard up on your wall or your cubicle or put this magnet on your fridge. You know what I mean? And right. Think of us next time. Or now it's about when you go to Google and look for that thing, we want you to find us, right? I mean, that's, that's, a, that's a huge part of it. Um, something we've been talking a lot with our businesses is getting in front of people in those outbound or push ways that aren't so much about remember us when you need X. It's just kind of branding, right? Right. Um, and then people can just, when they Google, they're going to Google search for you. Uh, that's something interesting, you know, for all of our listeners, if you're using Google analytics or any kind of analytics on your website, um, in Google search console will probably be actually be the best spot for this in Google and Bing webmaster tools, the amount of searches that are for your brand, right? So are people looking for your brand, not just your products and services, but Googling your company, you know, and searching for your company, uh, pretty good indication. You're kind of doing some good branding out there. Um, anyway, kind of getting off track there a little bit. What do you think, um, for business owners and marketers out there, um, marketing managers for the inbound marketing, uh, what are some critical things again, looking at like stats, what's important, you know, we're not measuring how many phone calls are being made today anymore or, yeah. or, uh, letters going out and appointments being booked. Um, Google rankings, for example, is, is, is one of them, um, as a business owner, but you're not getting into the minutia as a business owner. You're not yeah. like looking at this thing every single day or whatever. What do you want to know uh, about your company from a marketing aspect, particularly on that inbound side? Um, that should be important to everybody out there. Yeah. I mean, in terms of, um, y- I mean, you want to understand daily where you are in the Google rankings, right. Okay. And where you're showing up and, and we've gone through this exercise below or, you know, before, where if you show up, let's say in the sixth or seventh position, you know, on the first page, yes, your lead volume is going to go down. But not only that, your lead quality, because again, the customer is hunting, they're typically hunting for something nobody else has got, or they're hunting for the lowest possible price type yeah. of deal. Gouge your eyes out type price, which, you know. The you, first five people quoted them too high, so now they're calling the sixth person. Yeah, yeah. And, and maybe the first five are actually pretty competitive with the, within each other within, you know, 10, 20% or whatever the deal is. And I, I don't know what they're they're looking for, but they're looking for the deal of the century when they call sure. you. And so then you waste all this time and energy with that customer uh, or you cannot offer anything that's really different from than your competitors. And so that's why, you know, rankings is, is critical. Yeah. You know, you've got to be in that top three spot and ideally in that first spot. Right. And it's like, like anything else in sales, the first, if you're the first person they call and you, you kind of have the attitude of, well, if we can close one out of, you know, one out of four, one out of five, you know, that's, that's a good deal. You need to ask yourself the question, what are, what are the competitors offering that customer? And you better find that out. Right. And then you better figure out some kind of an offer that that's 
that's a, a mind boggler. So when they do call the other two, they're like, oh, forget that. I'm going to go back to choice number one or whatever the case is. So that's, those are the things, those are some of the metrics we look at, yeah. you know, and then as you know, we, we dial in the, the, the script of, you know, for a couple of reasons, you know, we want to know, we want to get inside the head of the customer and understand what are their concerns when they're calling? Is it price? Is it, you know, time of repair? Is it guarantees? Is it, you know, what are the things yeah. that, you know, if you can get that empathy of the customer, then you can script to that or play to that. Yep and and give them some something that nobody else is giving them and if they're calling your competitors and it's somebody that's getting paid minimum wage that doesn't really want to be there and they're just quoting a price and they're kind of like i don't care if you do work with us have a nice day type of thing we all we all have been through that and and we're in a day and age where labor is short there's a labor shortage and even qualified labor is even shorter type right. of a thing. For sure. So anyway, that's that's my goal is to try to empathize with the with the customer, with the prospect to figure out, you know, what I have to adjust on my end and how I have to serve them to to win their business. You mentioned something there a couple of times. Um, I want to kind of see if we can tease out a little bit. So we'll have like we tell people take our free SEO audit on our website, right? Yep. Top right corner, big yellow button, free instant SEO audit. And we say, research your competitors. If somebody's outranking you, see what they're doing on their page. Um, you mentioned a few times there, like, what are your competitors offering, right? Um, and I know you've said this to our team countless times, and maybe you can speak to the importance of it is, you should be calling your competitors or, or getting price quotes from them, whatever, just like your customers are, because you don't want to be basically on an island pitching your product and your service. Somebody calls you, hey, how much for XYZ? Yeah. Just throwing out your deal. Because you need to understand your context of, they call those other three people, especially if your rankings aren't number one, right? If you're number three, oh, yeah. four, five, or six. Then you really got to. They've made those phone calls your competitors, right? So you need to know, especially if you're behind them in the rankings, what <laughs> what are they saying? What are they, What's their pitch? What's their yeah, close, right? That's an even better point, right? I mean, you, you really need to understand if, if you're further down the pipe, you need to do your homework even better. Right. So you know, by the time they get to you, you definitely have a shot at, at landing their business, right? Because if you're not bringing something unique or, or different, I mean, literally they're just wasting your time. Yeah. So, like you said, developing that script with that kind of stuff in mind. Yep. Um, and I know, like I said, you, you challenge our team all the time weekly. You know, call a couple of competitors, um, and just different products, different services. What's the pricing? What's the turnaround times? Just any any factor depending on your industry that's important. Um, be aware of that, and if you find you have an advantage somewhere make sure that's in your script, right? Put on the front side, like, Hey, right. Yeah. We're not as cheap as everybody else, but we're faster, you know, or vice versa, depending on the situation. Um, and incorporate that. Cause even if it's, uh, not the best lead, you're still getting a phone call, you know, or something else. So find out if you can turn it into business or not as quick as you can and, and hammering on those points. So I think that's yeah. important to note. Yeah. And, and, and I mean, it's, I think part of the reason, you know, we, within the Intrix model and people, people click on the SEO, it's, it's, we talked about the lizard brain, right? Yep. And, you know, the lizard brain is that that fight or flight. I don't know if this is right, so I'll probably screw it up. But if you want to reference it, you know, look up lizard brain, Seth Godin, and he kind of speaks to it because sure. this is where I'm stealing this from. Good resource there. Yep. Yeah. And, and I listen to all Seth Godin's uh, podcast and, and all his information, and, and I try to read as many of his books as possible. But it basically goes to the fact that, you know, back in caveman days you know anything in our peripheral vision we'd freak out and scurry or whatever the case is much like animals Mm -hmm. and since you know that's not the world we live in today um nobody's you know no dinosaur is going to eat me or whatever that's not even possible right (laughs) there's no dinosaurs and people at the same time they're only on one island out in the ocean. I should have paid they made a movie about school. that. So, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, you know, it's it's that part of your brain that's just saying no, 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 don't do that. You can't do that, or whatever the deal is. And and you and I have been talking and, um, about doing some different things with Intrix. And one of the things we're we're going to take a look at is is literally offering free websites. Mm-hmm. We'll, we'll build a website and uh, we'll market the heck and do the SEO out of it for you in your market. And we simply get paid when the phone rings. Yeah which is a beautiful model because your lizard brain doesn't have to take that risk. Yeah. Right. Which is most people think small business is about risk takers and we're risk managers really at the yeah. end of the day. Right. So, uh, we'll be talking about that in the future for sure. 
but that's, you know, if there's one skill that I think I've, I've grown good at is that, uh, scramble skill of, you know, what do you got to scramble to do to stay alive or grow type of a thing and, yeah. and trying to be creative and stuff. And, um, we, we like doing that. I mean, we're pretty good at it. And it's when we work with our different customers on the Intrix side, it's, it's great hearing their story. It's great helping them grow their business. And we're not always successful, but the nice thing is when we're not, they don't lose any money. Right. We, we lose our time and money in that process, but yep. we gain incredible knowledge to move on to the, to the next level. Yeah. I mean, internet marketing, is there's no guarantees anywhere. No, you know, that's no. And so for all of our listeners, who's anybody ever makes you a guarantee, yeah. probably run, you know, as fast right. as you can the other direction, right. because that's just blatantly impossible. Um, which is kind of the crux of the pitch you're talking about that we're cultivating on yeah. and trying to offer that up there to break that down. And yeah, and uh, I think it, it definitely will help our listeners and I, I, and we can't help everybody. So don't take this the wrong way. If you, if you do approach us for a free website, uh, and, and we take a look at it and can't, you know, we can't do anything for you. We'll let you know. Yeah. But if, if it's something that we can, we can take and run with, we'll run with it because we're, we're pretty confident in what we're doing. Let's, and let's just, we don't have this yet. This is probably premature. And if you want me to edit this out and tell me, yeah. you know, as we, this will never exist if it's wrong, people won't hear this, but, um, go to intrix, com slash free site. Let's just, I know intrix.com slash free. Let's just do that. Yep. Um, if you're interested, we'll throw up a real quick form. Just give us your contact information. We'll roll something much more official out in the coming weeks here. This is kind of premature and on the fly. Sure. Um, but if you're thinking that you need some help and you don't want to do all the stuff on your own, uh, just drop us a line there. We'll communicate with you and kind of kind of get you in place for what Bob's talking about. Yep. Don't have a whole lot more to share there. That's kind of cryptic, but uh, it's just not ready. But coming out in conversation, we might as well throw something out there if, if anybody's interested. So indrix.com slash free. And uh, I also want to reference some of the stuff we're talking about here with a little bit of the lizard brain stuff and some of this customer handling. Uh, I got pulled up episode 12. Uh, is our episode on how to charge more for your services and close more customers with improved call handling. Uh, we also talked about just some of the how to handle people, not just on the phone calls, but just in general. I think some of that's very applicable to what you were just talking about there. So reference that to everybody. You'll find that in the show notes of this page yep. um, or on the page for this show. And, uh, and definitely check that out. So one more thing for, for marketers and business owners, rankings are number one, right? I mean, that's where is your website at for these things? That's kind of how we were on that topic there. Right. Um, is there any other, if you could pick one more thing for them to really be focused on? Yeah, you, be? it's GMB because rankings are going to take time, right? Sure. Yep. If you lived, eat, and breathed, and stalked me and Jesse and, and, and did all the work we asked you to do on this, and you, at, at the very earliest, unless you're in a very unusual market, probably taking 90 days, you know, 60 to 90 days. Um, but GMB is something you can just go to town with right away yep in reviews or stuff you can go to town with right away and reviews impact your gmb rankings like yeah crazy so and, and i would i would plead with some of you like get on the phone if you're a business to business type service okay and you've got business clients that are businesses and you you've been around for a while call them up say hey jim i really need you to do me a favor this I need you to leave a review for me on my GMB deal. Mm -hmm. If if you could do that for me, that would be huge. It would really help my business. Right. And we know it works. Yep. And it, on a lot of levels, it helps with the SEO piece and it helps with just that, that conversion piece. Big time. Yeah. Big time. You know, and there's other tips we'll give you too on how to move up the GMB, you know, listings over time. Yep type of a thing. Well, but we'll put a few links to some. We've had a few episodes. We'll yeah. throw those in the show notes here too for you guys to help out how to get more reviews, how to optimize your GMB because, I mean, that you got to have your website, of course, too. But right. really, that's where the rubber really meets the road. Get your GMB, get that thing ranked. You know, everything else is almost secondary to that because that's, yeah. that's where we're looking. So yeah. Especially for service businesses, local service businesses, you got to show up in that map pack. So, you bet. Absolutely. Yeah, so, I mean, if you're dead broke and or – run out of time which is both in many situations and you don't have time to do the the seo piece that we're talking about get your gmb squared away like you yep. said that's a that's a higher priority All right um do you have anything else you want to add that's about it thanks for for grilling me yeah <laughs> it's fun to finally turn the tables there yeah so let's get into our five star review of the week um got another great one here this week five star review from melissa of mind love podcast melissa says i recommend this to my husband since he has a local business and only knows the basics of seo this podcast is so helpful 
He's been able to get his presence up and running with no help from me, which makes me oh so grateful. Highly recommended. Thanks for the awesome review, Melissa. Thanks, Melissa. A lot of people are out there. Like we just said, tons of businesses, 95% fail within the first five years. Um, if you're not getting found online, SEO is a huge thing for you, especially yeah. in the local space. A lot of people know how to put up a website, how to get the basics out there. Uh, hopefully week by week, we just teach you a little bit more advanced tactics and tidbits and uh, like uh, episode a couple back talking about Bing, right? A lot of people ignore Bing. Just these little things you can do to add 5, 10, or 20% to your bottom line uh, for the amount of leads and business you're getting. Uh, hopefully, it helps you guys all out. So thanks, Melissa, for the great five-star review. Um, everybody else, if you want to leave us a review, go to intrix.com slash iTunes. You'll find everything you need there to leave a review on iTunes. Uh, I'd love to hear from you and uh, let us know what you think. All right, everyone, that does it for this week. Uh, thanks for tuning in. And see you next week. Bye.